I will tell you what, I this, <laughs> I have learned a lot this first week and a massive just kind of like unloading of things that I'm learning. I'm trying to condense it down into like five different things that I've learned this first week. Hi guys, my name is Kelsey and I am hiking the Appalachian Trail with my dog Ember. And I make these videos every week to kind of show you a little bit about what I'm doing out here on the Appalachian Trail and hopefully inspire you to do something exciting with your time, preferably outside and maybe even take a look at taking your best friend with you. So I have been on the Appalachian Trail now for seven days and um, I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail with my dog Ember, here she is. And um, we are currently not on trail, obviously we're in a hotel, but we are um, taking a zero day. The first um, seven days were good, tough. We're about just as sore as we figure we should be. Um, but the weather here is super chilly and rainy. So we decided to take a day off to try and beat the weather. The first thing that I learned is that I am out of shape. My dad hiked with me the first day and he's like carrying like no water and like his heavy pack and he's just like charging up the hill and no problems, barely taking any water breaks. And I'm like, <sighs> and I'm like sweating and <laughs> um, I felt really bad because I was like, I felt like I was slowing him up. But now um, I feel myself getting stronger and my lungs can like hold more air and my legs just feel good um, and I'm able to carry more water. I would practice for the trail and do like a half an hour every night on my stairs, like actually like the stairs to my basement with my backpack on. And I could do a half an hour listening to music, no problem. And it is true what they say, like it is different getting up and getting out and getting on trail than it is being in your home. So keep that in mind if you're at home and you are doing all these different things and crossfitting and trying to get ready for the trail, the trail itself is honestly your best, best, best way to get fit. Because I was in such bad shape, I didn't do a whole lot of filming of myself because my face was so red and I was afraid that people were gonna comment and be like, oh my gosh, do you need to go to the hospital? Like, ah, your face. But I have a naturally red face when I work out. So I'm gonna do a lot more of those kind of shots with me actually walking and climbing the hills next week because now I'm just much more acclimated and I'm not like a, I'm so acclimated. Um, I'm not perfect yet, but I am in a much better shape than I was last Monday. So, um, but instead, I've been using this cool app called Relive, and it, it's able to connect to my GPS, which I have in my backpack, and it shows you kind of a topographical map of where you go every day. So I'm gonna kind of show you those here.
On this day, I was actually supposed to be picked up by a different hostel, but I ended up getting picked up by Trail of Hope, and they brought me to my other hostel to get my package, brought me back to the hostel to drop everything off, and drove me to Walmart, and watched Ember while I did it. It was the coolest experience. is that the trail is super busy. I pass by lots of people every day, and I also am getting passed by people who are have already started in Georgia and have made it all the way up here to where I am. So Ember and I are flip-flopping, which means that we started in Harper's Ferry and we're going north, and then we are coming back to Harper's Ferry via car, and then we are hiking south to Springer. So we're kind of at the front end of the bubble were, um, that had started back in spring around March. So the super fast people are kind of like catching up to us and passing us a little bit. And we're like, well, you guys are so cool. I can't wait to be so cool like you guys. Third thing I've been learning is that there are lots of dogs out here. Ember is not the only one. I was really nervous when I started that Ember might be the only dog out here. Um, we, there's a dog a little bit ahead of us named Leo. Uh, we passed a dog yesterday named Bailey. Another thing I'm learning is that, um, is really to keep Ember at the forefront of my trip. Um, I'm kind of gonna get into this in other videos and I don't wanna kind of like steal my own thunder, but when I'm hiking with Ember, the trip is about Ember and it's not so much about me. Everything I do is about her and I think about her first. So for example, yesterday when we decided to get off trail um, because of the weather, we had only done seven miles and we could have done the next 10 into, or we had done 10 and we could have done the next seven into the campsite. But we were soaking wet, Ember was wet, um, it was cold, and it was, I knew that with our gear being made of down, this is synthetic, that Ember is able to like shed off her wet fur and put on nice warm clean fur like she is wet until she is going to be dry. So if I were to bring her back to the campsite and then she was to get all of our stuff wet then we'd have a wet miserable night. So we kind of decided to get off trail and she oh my gosh she slept all night and it was awesome. So. Um, I'm learning things all the time about working with Ember and being with her and um, kind of learning how to go at her pace. Something that she got this week is called Worker's Tail. It goes by tons of names. It goes by Worker's Tail, Swimmer's Tail, Limp Tail, all the things. Um, but what it means is that the tail, so usually when Ember walks, her tail is out like this when she's walking, but when you get worker's tail, it goes like this. So half of it sticks out like it's supposed to and the other half goes limp. Um, and there's lots of reasons for it. It can be over exercise, it can be a cold weather, um, it could be just like sleeping weird. It can be, it happens a lot to like dogs who um, like hunt, for example, in the colder fall weather. Um, but she had that like four days in and then we took it slow and then it wasn't there, but then Yesterday it kind of kept creeping a little bit back, so we decided that getting off trail was a good thing. But we're slowly learning to work together, and it truly isn't as hard as I think people make it seem to bring your dog on this trail. The fourth thing that I've learned is that even though we are starting in May, and it was like 80 degrees on day one, it is 40 degrees and raining today and yesterday and it's gonna be even colder overnight. Um, that's something that I wasn't anticipating was packing tons of rain gear, like rain pants and rain gloves. Um, and I had even sent a lot of our warmer stuff home. Um, so right now we just have the rain jacket and the compactor bag in my pack, keeping everything um, dry. But that's just something that we have to kind of work with. I can't pack for every single thing that's going to happen out here on trail and we're very fortunate that we have the opportunity to come into town if we needed to. 
Fifth thing that I learned was that trail hunger definitely does not kick in the first week. Um, I was actually having problems getting myself to eat breakfast and lunch. I was really hungry for dinners, but I was not hungry at all for breakfast or lunch. Like I would make my breakfast and I would look at it and I would be like, Kelsey, you eat that almond, eat it, eat it. And I just could not eat it. Um, it I would get really, really, really hungry around like 4 a.m. And I would not be hungry until maybe 6 p.m. And even then I would only be able to eat half of my food and then um, Ember would eat the rest of it. So Ember, this kind of also ties in. The last lesson I learned is that Ember needs to eat every time I do. She should get snacks. She should be able to eat lots of food if she's hungry for them. Um, like I said, it's about her. It's not so much about me. So if I'm hungry, I can only imagine because she is just like all over the place. It truly is a mental game out here. Like it, I've read every book. I don't think there's one bit of, you know, medium, whether it be book or video or podcast that I haven't researched, covered or anything, but they all talk about how the physical aspect of it is like 20%. And the 80% of it is the mental game of being alone all day and then getting in your own head. Like I have called my mom, my fiance, my friends, and I'm thinking like, do I take a zero today? Do I not? And it's kind of like when I'm weighing out the pros and cons, like I always like describe it like the rational part of myself says, it's 40 degrees, it's raining, it's chilly. My foot kind of hurts, I could take a day off. Um, Ember could use a day off and the, the the trail is a just swampy mess. But then like the irrational part of me is like, but I'm gonna lose all the people that I'm following and I don't wanna get too far behind. And which is, the perspective is so off. Like I was in the hotel last night getting a cup of water and this guy came up to me and was asking about, I had Ember with me and was asking me about Ember and what we were doing and told him that we were hiking the trail and he had asked how far we'd come and I said something along the lines of, well, we just came from Harper's Ferry. And he said to me, he was like, you didn't just come from Harper's Ferry. That's like, that's like 70 miles away. That's a big deal. Congratulations. And um, it's like, okay, yes, you're so right. Like I needed to hear that because otherwise I just get in my head and I'm like, ah, like I'm not moving fast enough and there's no rush. I can't, I mean, there is a rush, but I don't, if I don't take the time to slow down, especially on days like this when it's raining and I put a full week in of walking and sweating, um, then I may never take them. So I need to be sure that I'm gonna be physically okay, that Ember's gonna be physically okay. Um, and it's just those little things that need to you need to kind of talk to yourself and get out of your own head before you um, are unkind to yourself. And I think that the way you know the week of all the physical activity for me was a big week. And I think um, there is nothing wrong with taking a day off after your first week. Um, give yourself a chance to like kind of recenter and get out of get out of your own head. It is easy at the end of the day to kind of feel like, oh, I could have gone farther, I could have done more things, but then I look at this app and I see that it creates this little video and you can look and you're like, wow, I did a lot of work. I went really far. And it's, it's easier to then tell yourself like, Kelsey, not a problem, you are fine, this is good. But like I said, it's like a mental game. So those are the five big things I learned this week and I hope that someone somewhere out there takes something from this um, and realizes that it truly is hike your own hike. You need to go at your own pace and you need to take whatever is important to you and you need to incorporate that into your own hike and figure out what that means for you. Um, and it is okay to take a break. It is okay to take a zero. And it's okay to be proud of yourself because I think that 70 miles is actually, actually a big deal. So, so I hope you like this video. Um, in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna do different things like gear videos and um, you can kind of meet some of the people that I'm hiking with. But if there's anything very specific that you guys wanna see, put it in the comments below and I will be sure to take a look at those. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.